um, as everybody's coming in. Uh, this is going to be pretty straightforward session. Uh, mine is on the fly, uh, exactly what it sounds like. I'm going to do some stuff on the fly. Um, so as everybody comes in, as everybody gets in here, I'm just going to be working through that in that way. Um, so if you throw some questions in the chat, I will be keeping an eye on it. Um, and I will just, you know, go through some things. If I go too fast with anything, just help me slow down. I'm going to try to go pretty slow uh, for me, but I work with stuff a lot with this stuff. So sometimes I go a little faster than I think I'm going. So just, uh, you know, throw it in there. I know Kasha is watching the chat and some others. Um, so as you're going through, just throw some stuff in the chat and um, we'll be able to go through there. Um, Absolutely. So oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, I think it's about ready. Hi, everybody. Who's that? All right, so hi, everybody. I hope everybody's doing well. Um, my name's Edward Note, just give you a little background on me. Uh, from Long Island originally, uh, moved down here into South Florida. I've uh, been teaching in South Florida since uh, 2002. Uh, I got to meet Marcus when he came here to visit and work with him uh, to teach at FAU uh, for my master's degree. And uh, then, and that was just an amazing experience. That was what got me hooked on uh, GeoGebra because uh, we were using some other programs and then they became paid programs. So we needed something. And our awesome professors there found Marcus and GeoGebra. Um, then through that, I, you know, I just stuck with it and I've been having a lot of fun with it. I use it in the classroom. I used it when I went to uh, UCF for a while. And now I'm back here in uh, South Florida again. And I'm working at Pompano High School. And it's been a lot of fun. This is uh, first year back fully in the classroom in a while. So GeoDrip has been a lifesaver, just to be honest. Uh, I, I just, I use it a lot. But I use a lot right now on the fly. And that's why I wanted to call this GeoGebra on the fly. Um, one of the biggest things that I use on the fly to start with is the notes. So I'm gonna just go over here in the bottom right of my screen here. And you can see this is the GeoGebra homepage. So the first thing on the GeoGebra homepage is that we have you know, all nice stuff in here, start calculator you know, classroom resources. Uh, I have my students come in here and they log in. But for me, I jump right to these notes. So when I click notes, I can go in and I have a writing tool. And my writing tool, I just come on, uh, go on with my students and I start my notes. I use this just like a lot of interactive tools. Um, the reason why I use this over some others, my slate does not want to work right now for a second. So let's see if I can get that working, but that's not a big deal. I can write right on here. Um, in the bottom right here, I can actually add some pages. And so what I'll do to get started is I will start adding some pages and I will add a few. One thing I will say when you're using this in class, um, don't let this plus button get on top of a uh, paper. Reason for that is they sometimes it glitches a little. Um, I love GeoGebra. It's free. It's awesome. And I love going through and finding those things because then, as you can see, I can scroll right down and get that plus button below the paper. It has not done it nearly as much as since I started talking with GeoGebra and some others about uh, going through this. But now I'll just hit plus scroll down, hit plus, and I'll add a few pages. The other thing uh, I will say about this is that you have some buttons here on the top. You could see a little writing tool. They've just added this ruler, the protractor, but you have basic writing tools and some colors. Um, then when you hit the next little icon, I've got some rectangles, squares, circles, and I could start drawing stuff right on the fly. And I could start going through it with my kids and working with things. Um, I also have lines. There's a mask here uh, that's relatively new. It's just basically a solid that you can put on top of things and move them away. Um, you can change the color of this as well. 
You can change any attribute to things on the screen with the select tool. And as I click on something, I can add, when it's a normal object, I can add it so it's got different types of fillings. I can add it so it's got different colors. And then I can change the opacity and change the color. Um, I can change it so it's filled differently. Um, uh, sorry, sorry, there's it. a question. Uh, how you get to notes? Okay, how do I get to notes again? Um, not a problem. Like I said, just throw it in there. Um, and as I was on the main homepage, notes has become part of the calculator suite. Uh, but the one way I get to it a lot is just right here on the right hand side, it says more apps, and I click notes. Thank you. No problem. And the other thing that you can do in here is besides just basic shapes, I can click this little uh, paper clip. And so in here, and this is the cool part that I like is that it's got all of these things built in here. Um, I'm not gonna go through graspables, but I will go through a little bit with mind map, web, GeoGebra, and a few of these others. Um, so I'm going to go to, again, if you click this little circle on the bottom right with the little rectangles, I can click there and I can go to add pages, other pages. And again, if you're going to add a page, just be below the other pages when you hit the plus sign. That helps to make sure nothing happens. But when I'm in here on a blank page, I'm going to click right now PDF because we all use PDFs, we all use different things. And if I find a PDF that's on here, I'm just gonna go into my documents, hopefully I have, I cannot. All right, I'm just gonna go into a PDF here. Doesn't matter what the PDF is. Um, <laughs> just gonna go into worldwide group here. I'm gonna grab this. I know it's something else, but uh, I don't want to use that. No, I'm just going to use my dad's old PDF downloads. Let's see. I had one in here. I don't know what happened to it. Okay, effective teaching. It doesn't matter. Go right there. I'm going to hit open, whatever PDF it is. You'll notice I can drop this PDF on here as this page, whatever page is in this main window. So I can hit the next button or I could type in a page for whatever page in the PDF I wanna insert. So if I hit insert, now I've got all of this on here and I can move it around. I can scale the image or I can zoom in and out on the whole page. And so if I zoom out on the page, I can then also scale the image. So this is a way that a lot of times I will drop in things that I can just say, all right, I'm gonna add a PDF on something I found online or that the kids are working with on paper. And I can drop it right into this window just by hitting PDF, clicking here and navigating my computer to wherever that document is, okay? And wherever that document is, I can then throw it in and I can start working with it. And that document will go right in whatever page I want. Um, so as I'm working with things, it's really nice to be able to just drop in whatever I want, whatever page of it, if I'm working with my students. So you might say, well, what's different from that from others? No matter what I build in here, I can actually save it and it'll save online. So I'm just going to hit cancel and hit this line button. And so I'm going to hit the save button. And so just like other stuff. Uh, I'm just going to put um, comp test. Okay, and right here I can save this, and it'll go right to my information uh, that I saved so, online. Sorry, uh, there's a question in the chat: if uh, if this uh, participant, if the if the viewer uh, can the viewer do the uh, is it interactive the notes, uh, whatever this, you. This can. is what I'm going to get to right now. Okay, thank so, you. So. I save any notes I want and I can hit GeoGebra and go back, go to my profile now. And now that this is saved, I can click in here 
And I can do one of two things with the notes. If I created a note in here that I just want to use for my class, and it's going to be what I write on and what updates during class that I write on it, and it'll be something my kids can follow along with, I'm going to actually just share this in the normal way. So I'm going to hit these three dots, and I'm going to click share. I'm going to copy this link. And then for me, I use, uh, I use Canvas. Other people use different uh, places to go. Um, I use Canvas myself. I'm going to go down here. I believe I opened up my Canvas. Maybe I didn't. It did, but it must have closed on me. I'm going to go back here. I have this open. Okay, so on here, I actually have my Canvas dashboard open. And if I go into my courses, and I'm just gonna go into my Algebra 2 Honors. And this is for Canvas. You can drop it in the same way for most other things. So you can see I set up my weeks. And if I wanna add this, I would just hit to add an external URL like everything else. And in that, sorry, that popped up. In this external URL, I would paste and I would say today's notes or something or put the date and that's what I usually do. Um, and when I add the item, now I can scroll down to the bottom and my kids can have a link to the notes just like here. They have a link to my notes on factoring. Um, I put in notes on factor by grouping. And so I put all these notes in. When the kids look at the notes, they can open it up and click on it. You're gonna see my ugly handwriting, but uh, this is some notes on factor by grouping. I did it on the fly and I was writing in here. My students can view it right here just by clicking on it. And if they created their own account, which we'll talk about in a minute, they can click here and hit open an app and then they can write on their own notes. And a lot of my students will, uh, that have the love for technology online, I don't have a ton of students who have their own computers and Is own stuff. Is it a question if you can use tablet pen? Yes. Right now. That's, that's where I was going with. I actually have a student in my class who opens this up in his app and he's got a tablet that he brings to school and he starts adding his notes to the notes that I have written in there. And so after I upload these, I'll put them in. I usually put some notes in to start the day and then I'll end and I'll add my notes throughout. And some kids will just follow along and watch and write their own notes on paper or other kids will open this in an app on their tablet or on a, another device and they'll start writing their own notes on that. And it's really a lot of fun to see the kids actually interacting and doing that. Um, I was shocked that the kids started downloading. I didn't even think about it at first. Some kids started downloading the notes and started writing and opening in the app and writing on their own, on my notes. The other way to utilize these notes. So I'm gonna go right back in here in GeoGebra. And so I'm gonna go right back into those notes that I was just in to practice in here. So my conference test. And if I click in, just like the students, they can hit open an app and I'll pop it right open and now I can write on my own. If I open my own and I'm signed in like normal and I made it so it'll change the notes. And that's what's really nice about this too. I put the link in my canvas, but if I go to a page and write on it and then hit save, it won't change what the kids have because I don't change anything about it as long as I'm saving it, okay? So as I save these things and reopen them, I can actually edit them and play with them in there. And these notes will save with the other notes because it'll save right in there in the same file. I hope that makes sense. Um, 
So as I'm using so the, this, the, the notes notice. will change in the student's view. Yes, they will be the same link. It'll, it, it, it'll be the same link the whole time. That link won't change because I gave the kids the link already. So when I hit save and I save this, it's not creating a new file, it's just updating the other one. Okay, uh, there's a question in chat. Uh, can students, because this is interesting, can students add notes while you are writing? No, they have to make the copy, yes? Okay, right. so they would open an app. So they can click here and click open an app and they would open, and since they're not me and it's my file, they can open it right in the app and it would open for a copy for them and they can start writing and editing. The other way to do this and share with them is what Tim and some others talked about earlier, which is you can actually create a lesson with the notes. But then each kid is, you're not adding to theirs and they're not adding to yours anyway. So that's why with the notes, and if it's just notes, I don't create a lesson with it. I have the students, I just share the link and I have, and I tell them, open it in an app if you want to use it online. I show them how, just click open an app. And if they're logged in, they can save it right online as well. And at the end, after I show this about notes, I'm going to show the next piece, which is about them going into um, creating their own account and what I do in the classroom. So I'm just going to open this back up in the app. So here are some other cool things that you're going to notice about this once this loads. Open it loads. All right, so the other pieces that you saw in there, when I click this and I go to a blank page, is this paperclip. And we added the PDF. There's a web link. This is one that I took straight from Tim. He taught me how to do this, which is if I click web, I can post stuff in here from any web address. The thing I really like going to is in GeoGebra, if I find a file that I like, like uh, today I'm gonna take a look at a little bit of transformations of functions. Um, so I'm gonna click transformations and it's gonna find me some stuff on transformations, um, whatever I find. So like this file here from Tim, if I click on this file of transformations of functions, if I like it and I wanna add it right into my notes, instead of toggling back and forth from notes to here, I can click on here, the dots, or I can just copy this web address. So I can use the share button or I can just copy the web address. So I'm gonna copy the web address. I'm gonna go back to my notes and I'm gonna paste that web address in. And watch what happens when I hit insert. Bam. There is the file that I was just looking at, the GeoGebra part only. Um, so if there's questions and there's other stuff, it's not gonna put it in here, but I can move this around and I can click into this app and I can manipulate it. So now I'm manipulating in this app straight through my notes and I can save it and give that to my kids with the notes on the side that'll have all the fun information. So I can talk about transformations in this way on this screen and I can talk about it and write some notes on transformations right next to it. Instead of going, okay, we're gonna write some notes, then toggling to this thing, and then toggling back, I've got it right here, live next to me. And I can mess with that just by the select tool. And I can move the app around, or if I'm on the select tool, I click into the app, I just click on it, and now I'm in the app and I can move stuff around. Okay, so as myself in the classroom, I love this idea. So you're gonna see here in my GeoGebra profile, I actually started building a few things in here for 
my next lesson, which is, you know, when I build my, uh, my, my notes, I build them in here and I also make a book. And I'm gonna show you how to do these two things together because I like sharing this stuff with my students. So these are some notes and this is a cool thing and I'm gonna show you how to build it. But in here, I'm gonna open an app and you're gonna see the things that I started adding and the things that are just blank. So everything in here is stuff that I just find, except this I found right in here in this tool. It's called Mind Map. So on a blank page, if we're talking about different pieces, I can build a mind map and I could say, okay, today's main idea is transformations. And now of uh, functions. And I can build right off this mind map. And I can go back to things and I can build off that. Then I can go back to this main idea. And oh, I want to add another idea to this that pre that precede previewed this. Uh, I want to add something that's going to come next. And that's the idea that I started with here, because with my students, they have seen. You know, and my next lesson is actually on transformations of functions. And so I built geometric transformations and I left a blank for me to write in later. And linear is something we've covered. I left a blank, quadratics and trig. And I'm gonna have my kids and I are gonna have a discussion on what I should put in these boxes. What makes these connect to transformations of functions? Um, and then as I go through, my very next page has an app in it for geometric transformations that I found, this is not an app, I, I did build this, but this is not an app you need to build. I just found this online. And I built some stuff that I like the way it looks now, but in here, I just added this to my notes because I found it in GeoGebra, back in my GeoGebra site. I typed in when I typed in transformations and I can search through here on different transformations and I can add these, each one of them, just like I did before. All I would do is once I find the app, I go back here. Once I find the app, I go to a blank. Ooh, I'm going to show that in a minute. Ah, sorry, <laughs> give me one second. Uh, I go to a blank page. And I would just add in the, the app right here by clicking web and pasting the web link. And that'll give me that app right there. Um, I add a few apps in here, as you can see. It kind of, any page that I put an app on, you can kind of see this puzzle piece. And when I click on it, it'll load the app. Um, I would recommend when you're using the app and you're putting it in here, don't grab the corner of the app and scale it. Use these zoom in and zoom out because the zoom in and zoom out that are here will scale the whole thing and not mess with my window. But if I scale it this way, you'll see how the window gets messed up. So I don't wanna scale it that way. I wanna scale it with this so the window doesn't change. Because the window, I liked it. Uh, if I want to change the window, I can go in here and mess with it inside the app with my window stuff. And if you're wondering how I'm doing this part, I'm actually just hovering. I clicked into the app and with two fingers on my mouse pad, I can zoom in and zoom out. Um, so as I'm doing that, you can go in notes, you can add applets, you can add different pieces. Um, as I'm adding applets to my notes, I'm gonna cancel there. When I add an applet to my notes, I go right back in my resources and I start creating a book, Transformations of Functions, and I start adding applets in here. Um, actually, I'm gonna to go to my other book that I was just creating with this one. Uh, so, uh, there is a question in the panel uh about Go how if you want to create activity notes uh, so students can interact uh do you have something like okay. that okay so 
So. The kids interacting with these, uh, they're not going to interact with me. Okay. They can just write in their own notes and I'll be able to see it in the same way of any other activity. So right here, I have this, I'm going to hit save just so I have it saved and it's called library of functions notes. And I'm going to go back to my, as this once it saves, I'm going to hit go in here and go to my GeoGebra because once you save it, you got to go back to your profile and view the file outside of the app. It doesn't like take you out of the app to view it, but it'll be once you save it, it'll be the first thing in your profile. So these are my notes. And so this is the part that, you know, you can do if you want with notes. I typically, well, you can hit create lesson. And you'll notice I have the library of functions in here. These are just the notes. I hit create lesson. And now my students have this. Um, when I click this link, this right here, I can copy this. Oops. I can copy this link. Or I can hit these page buttons. That's the copy button. Okay, so uh, if I may just stop you here a little bit. So what you are saying that notes are like other other uh, activities in They're GeoGebra? Like any other activity in GeoGebra, I can create an activity from it. Um, there are some cool things about notes that are the, will be different in the future. Not right now. But if I copy that, I can click modules and go right in here or in whatever other application you have, and I can add this link. Um, you're gonna notice in here, I'm gonna go to one that I have. So this is a GeoGebra activity, but you'll notice when I create GeoGebra activities and put them in here, um, because I'm just putting them in as links, I'll do a block five, six, and eight, because I have block five, six, and eight with this class. They're all in one Canvas course for me. If you have separate Canvas courses cool, for every block or every period, that's great. Or if you have all your kids into one Canvas period, one Canvas class, you can just add, I created three different ones. And when I create the activity, so let me just go to my homepage here. If I go into an activity like these notes or anything else, um, like was done earlier, if I'm gonna create the lesson, I'll just edit this name and call it block five. And when I hit create, now I'm gonna copy this. I'm gonna put it into Canvas, but when I add it, I'm gonna, I'm gonna name it block five with, and I'm gonna tell the kids whatever it is so that I have one for each class. And in my GeoGebra, I always name them that way. So this way, one, the kids can see right at the top that they're in. And the other part is that they can, they can jump right into things. Um, and I can, I can organize it. I'm gonna jump in here, but I'm gonna try to quickly hide some names. Hide names. So I like this because I can hit hide show names and I can project stuff um, in here. And you can see I have different kids at different places. I could see right away what they're doing on here and writing. And I could see the graphs they're drawing because they're drawing by hand on this one. Um, I can go into a student and I can have the class looking at what's happening in here. And you can see I did a little matching in here. Uh, I didn't make this. Anything with the words I am is uh, illustrative math which is also what um, the same people who, uh, as Tim was talking about earlier, is open up. Um, these are illustrative math activities. And so I created this out of it at, straight from theirs. I just deleted the stuff I didn't want. Um, and I'm gonna show you how I did that in a minute. I know I don't have much time, um, but yeah. So when you create these, you're gonna wanna put things like that in there, like uh, make it separate by block when you save it or by period put it in and have your students view. Um, and you can go in there. One of the things that is gonna come in the future, which will make notes really cool, and I kind of have this set up right here. Um, in the future, and I, I don't know if I should, it's 
supposed to show you this or not, but I'm going to show it to you. Um, in the future, there's going to be this cool add-on. So we have, I have a notes activity here, or I have this right here, and I just called it groups. So this is a sketch the graph of the parent function and have this, uh, and, and that in blue, and then sketch this graph in green. Um, I can hit create lesson. Now I'm in so, beta sorry, right uh, Wait, there's a question in the chat. Uh, I think you were showing all activities together. So the question is somebody asking the chat, how you, uh, um, how you group activities together? Um, uh, give me one moment on that. Um, but I just wanna show this really quick because I'm seeing my time is limited and I wanna show this future and then I'll show the grouping. But this is create, if I'm in a, in the future of GeoGebra, which I'm in right now uh, online here. If I hit create lesson and I just have a whiteboard on there, or if I just have something, um, let me get into the future here. Go to, okay, I'm just gonna go to the future really fast. <laughs> I joke about that because this is a site that you can, I'm using that can view it kind of as a future activity or what's coming. I could play with some of the stuff that's coming. Um, so if I create a lesson in here and it just has a whiteboard, right now it's only gonna be available for whiteboard. So the same things that you were looking at before. So if kids had notes, I could put the notes up here in a whiteboard and in the future we'll be able to name it, hit next, and you could see individual pairs, groups, groups of four. So I can put my kids in pairs on here and hit create. Now, everybody I put in group, if I put this, I'm just gonna drop this link right into chat. Uh, let's see, I'm gonna put this to everybody. If I put that link right in chat, you're gonna see as you guys jump in here, you'll be able to draw and you'll be able to do stuff in here and it's gonna group you right in. So I've got Sarah and Kasha in a group. I've got, I've got some people in here, different people in groups and I'll start to be able to, when I click in, see when I click into each one of these, I'll be able to see who's doing what as a group in your graphs to see how you're doing with things. And so I'll be able to see what you graph, how you do it, and the different things that you do in there. Um, All right, now so it says is, that you are organizing groups. I cannot do anything. Yep. I'm just gonna, it says you're waiting for the task. Oh, start so student work. To start. You have this, this and thing. so right here, I have a button, start student work. So I'm just gonna hit start student work. And you guys can all then just jump in and start working together. Um, now that I have some people in here. And so you can all just start to see you and your partner have colors and have different things and you can graph and do what's on there. It's gonna get to be a lot cooler. They're really working on this, um, but you can really start doing stuff as a group. Um, and I, I'm really excited for this to happen because this will be my next step, which is just having kids graph and do stuff and everything that Tim talked about with high level thinking that um, they use in there. Uh, for open up is going to be awesome. Okay, so the question here was, how do I group things? I'm going to go to my profile. Kasha, how, what time do I end? Wait, 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 where are you? <laughs> 11.30, so you have nine minutes, nine more minutes. Okay, Wonderful. so I'm just going to show here, if you hit the create button, you can create a Wait, button. wait, wait, so you are on your profile in GeoGebra. I'm on my profile in GeoGebra, and I'm gonna go back to the original GeoGebra. I'm gonna get out of, I'm gonna go back to normal GeoGebra. In here. So right now I'm in, Ge I'm gonna go into GeoGebra normal. That's this. So it gets a little cluttered with these new, this new system. Uh, but I'm gonna go to the homepage of GeoGebra. If I go to my profile, so if you're looking at the screen, I'm going to my profile. If I hit create, I can create a book. 
And so when I create these books, this is what Tim was talking about earlier. He, the, uh, the stuff for illustrative or for some others are created in book form a lot of times. And so I can call this um, test. You can give it a description or whatever you want. I'm just going to do a share with link because if you want to share with students, you got to do share with link. And I'm going to hit save. And this right here is where it starts me to add in. I can add chapters like geometry. Save. Now, when I'm creating a book, when I hit add activity, it's hard to search in here for me. I don't know about everybody else, but it's hard for me to search in here. So I'll be on another tab in GeoGebra and I'll be searching in my normal search. Or I might scroll down in here and find something somewhere else. And this is what I was talking about, illustrative mathematics. And they've got the free high school and middle school curriculum. It's fantastic. Uh, or I might just search here, transformations and put my last name at the end because I already know I have something nice there. And I've got this um, transformations of functions activity right here. And when I find something I like that I want to add to the book, I just copy it, the link, or I can hit the three dots and hit share, and it'll give me a link to copy. Same way I did before, but now I'm going to go to my book, and I'm going to paste it right in this search. So in my book that I'm editing, when I hit add activity, I'm just going to paste that link. And when I paste this link, it's going to come up with the one I want and I'm gonna hit add, because I already did the search in the big screen. I'm not a fan of searching in the small screens. <laughs> I'm not good at it. My students are, but I am not. Um, so once I have things in here and I can keep adding activities, adding chapters, I can hit view book. And I can, if I want, I can create a lesson with this and I can share this book with my students and they'll be able to go to every single activity or thing I added to that book and see them. And so I can copy this link. Then. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Ed. Thank you for sharing. This is wonderful from the, like on the fly. I just wanted to ask you, and you can add notes to the book. Yes, you can add <laughs> the notes to the book. And the notes can anything. have pages. Yep. And so I like can fractal, actually go like in here. One in the other. <laughs> anything I want as I'm going, I can just go in here and hit view original. And if I'm on the activity and I hit view original, anything I add to this book will go to that link. So if my students have that original link for the lesson, I can go right in here and edit the book. And then at the end of the period, I can add the notes in here. Or if I go, oh, I found something else with unit circle and i found something cool and i wanted to add it i can add it in here Wonderful. and when i hit view instead of going to create a lesson i can go right to my profile to that activity that i had created and i gave my students it's called the lesson anything that's an activity is called a lesson anything that's books so i'm going to go to the lesson that i created that's the students and you can see in here, I've got this left, the original, and I've got the new one I just added. Well, so giving your students one link and then you being able to add to it as you go is fantastic add on here. And I think so. We have to finish because we yep, have to have it. a minute to move from one room to the other. <laughs> Thank yep, you so much. You, you you share. This is incredible to see a, a, a person like at at work. I think next year you have to do a session when you show your actually work, like you prepare yeah, a lesson yeah. or something. And that's it where is, I wanted to just go with, and I hope everybody got out of this. Is that you, you I did, don't want you, you did to be a lot intimidated. Of that. Yes, yes. I, I think want you to just incredible. jump in. Okay. I oh, somebody's asking can students play. edit your your book. Only if they copy it, yes. So no, the, in your job, this can, is the, the whole thing, yes. You you cannot uh, uh, edit original, uh, pro produce whatever it is, a book. Uh, you have to copy it, and then you can edit it. And then yeah, you, you know, there's a question of sharing. You have to really have a good imagination to to understand what is going on. But I think you explained pretty well, and mm -hmm. it's wonderful. 
Yeah, and Scott, you know. just like it says, can, can I just, <laughs> sorry, you can add, like Samantha said in there, you can add an editor and collaborate with a teacher. So you can add collaborator. Um, and then you, students can't edit anything without copying or unless they, they can write on stuff. It just doesn't edit the, your original. So the, everybody just edits that. So that's all I'm going to say. Thank you so much, everybody, <laughs> for being here. You're all awesome. I'm super excited. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much. You show us different corners, different views. Uh, it's so amazing. We have so many different approaches to one, you know, thing. Yes, this is a, you, you show us like the, the, how you do it every day. We, we, I really love it. I, I think I learned so much. Thank you so much. And uh, people will say thank you. I don't know if you can see the chat. Uh, and uh, let's have a couple of minutes of break and let's move to the lobby and then let's move to the other room when we'll have Steve Feltz. Thank you, um, thank you Ed, so much. Thank you, wonderful. Thank you so much. Okay, see you later. Bye bye. Let's finish. I think you have to finish the, the, the webinar. Yep, I'm just going to hit stop share. Uh, no, no, I, I think I'm you doing a webinar. For all. Yes.